Vesper is the next step or expression from our Lewis dot structures. Ultimately, when we talk about molecules, we are talking about covalently bonded compounds. And when we talk about these, we've already alluded to this a little bit when we talked about intermolecular forces, in that between molecules there are certain attractions and observations that we make about how substances behave and how they react. And this is ultimately going to be linked to the number of bonded and unbonded pairs. So that bonding and non-bonding electrons in a compound. A couple of things you already know. We know that electrons repel each other, like charges repel. Well, that means in a molecule where I have electrons being shared, there's going to be an interaction, an interaction between the electrons. And the electrons and how these interact are going to play out in terms of the three-dimensional space any molecule will occupy. So we make a couple of assumptions based on the interplay between our atomic orbitals and our electrons themselves. And this interplay and this assumption is that electrons will try to be as far away as possible from each other. This is what allows us to predict the shape. So, for example, to understand and be able to recognize how a Vesper molecule shape, how we figure that out is we always start with a Lewis structure because the Lewis structure is where we find out what electrons are shared and what electrons are unshared. And that's hugely important because ultimately when we look at the shape that's going to be produced by any combination of atoms and electrons is we recognize that unshared pairs of electrons have a greater impact on the shape than shared pairs. Now, shared pairs will limit how many bonds I can make between atoms. It will limit the direction and the three-dimensional space occupied. But unshared pairs, because they're not limited in space, will literally have a greater repulsive force because they're literally larger they have a, that greater force because literally they can occupy more space than say a shared pair right here. This is where we get the Vesper theory. The idea that electron pair repulsion is what is generating and the cause of our shapes and since we know that electrons will try to be as far apart as possible that means we can basically predict a molecule shape. Now the important thing here, what we're actually dealing with is what we would know term electron domain geometries. In other words, the electron domain is where those electrons will be found in a particular compound. So for example, if we look at SO3 here, SO3 is actually what's known as trigonal planar. In other words, I have an O here, I have an O here, I have an O here, I have S in the middle, and because there's no extra electrons on that central atom, they get as far away as possible, which is about 120 degrees. If it's linear, you have a 180, tetrahedral, 109.5. So ultimately, what we're looking at is we see there are different and predictable ways that the electrons and their bonds can be located around a central space. Now, the molecular geometry is always a product of the electron geometry. The electron geometry is where we have shared and unshared pairs. So if I have four sets four pairs of electrons around a central atom, I have what's known as tetrahedral electron geometry. Now, the crucial thing here is recognizing that the electron geometry is not necessarily the molecular geometry. Okay, And ammonia here is the best example. So look at our Lewis structure. We know our Lewis structure is NH3. We have these two lone pairs of electrons on top of the nitrogen in the central atom. Here, so I have four electron geometry, four electron domains. I have the unshared pair, and then I have three shared pairs. Now, anytime you see this solid line coming towards you, that means that that is coming off the plane of the paper. The dashed line means that it's going back behind the plane of the paper, and this is in the plane of the paper. Because remember, we're limited in, we're trying to draw something three-dimensional in 2D, kind of the XYZ axis. Notice the shape that we produce. So the nitrogen is here. These lone pair have a repulsive force. Well, let's try actually a pin here. Pin. Have a repulsive force on the bonded pairs, pushing them further away, and it occupies more space. 
So we can determine our molecular geometry from a particular electron geometry, but the electron geometry isn't necessarily the molecular geometry. Okay, classic example, tetrahedral. Draw CH4. We just saw NH3. And then look at H2O. All three of these compounds have four electron domains, but notice the difference in the number of bonded atoms to the central atom, and therefore the implied number of unshared electrons. And those unshared electrons have a huge impact on the shape. So we know we have to start with the Lewis dot diagram. That's what we're always going to start with. Now, once we have generated our Lewis dot diagram, now we use what's known as a Vesper chemical formula, a Vesper formula, and we start substituting. So we're going to use A, X, and E to represent the parts of our molecule. A is the central atom, X or any atoms bonded to it, E represents our lone pairs of electrons. So if we start with ALCL3, for example, we get our Lewis structure done. So my advice, pause the video, draw ALCL3, make sure you generate the same Lewis structure as this. So if we do the AXE, we get this. So AL is A, CL is X, we get in essence an AX3 here. Now you guys are not going to actually be on page 200. You have a handout and you see some of these in your book in chapter 9. Ultimately, if I find AX3, this is what's known as trigonal planar. It's literally flat. Planar tells you it's flat, trigonal, three parts. So if you lay it flat on, on the counter, it lays flat, it's perfect. Contrast this with our PCL3, where you notice that we have these lone pair of electrons. In other words, now it looks like the NH3, and we get trigonal pyramidal. Again, in terms of electron domains, I have one, two, three, four. So this has an electron domain that is tetrahedral, all right? But the molecular structure is trigonal pyramidal. You all do need to be able to track back and forth between the two. And the last example that you've kind of seen already is water. Again, we've done this enough. We have two pairs of electrons, two, lone, two unshared or lone pairs of electrons on the central atom. So I have one, two, three, four areas of electron domain, so this is still tetrahedral, but because my Vesper formula is AX2E2, it's actually known as bent or angular geometry. Again, final points, we use the structure of the molecule for any molecule or any polyatomic ion can be represented by our Lewis dot diagrams. The Lewis dot is supposed to show us the pattern of paired and unpaired or shared and unshared pairs of electrons. Vesper is a way that takes the Lewis dot to predict our molecular shapes. And our molecular shapes are based on electron domains. Those electron domains do not necessarily equal the molecular shape, but it does show us how unshared pairs of electrons have a greater repulsive force within and allow us to better predict the shape of a molecule and how the electrons interact to help further explain intermolecular forces and reactivity.